This video is going to look at some of the current southern hemisphere tropical cyclones or potential systems. Um, if you're looking for the zooms to the eye of cyclone Idai, those are at the end of this video in the ending sequence. So you can jump there if you want to see that. I'm going to look at a little bit of the savannah over here, tropical cyclone savannah, which is a category three uh, hurricane strength system and then more importantly though is this developing system over uh, to the north east of Queensland and just a note on categories I mentioned Savannah is category 3 if you go to the Bureau of Meteorology's website you'll see it's a category 4 that is because they're using a different category scale than the one I typically use in these videos I'm sticking with the hurricane category scale for all over the globe to keep things consistent. The basis of calling it a Category 3 hurricane strength system, it comes from JTWC, the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, which gives it at 100 knots, that makes it a category, that's what makes it a Category 3 hurricane strength system. Now, as you can see, it is not heading anywhere towards any land within the foreseeable future, and uh, yes, it will dissipate, most likely, by the looks of things in the southern Indian Ocean. So we're not going to look at this in any detail because it's not a significant threat to any land but we are going to look at the Queensland system because that is a threat to land albeit the immediate threat is to quite empty land uh, but anyway let's take a look at that so here is the system that is near Queensland and it it is currently called 92p I believe uh, Queensland is over here. This is the Cape York Peninsula, and it's uh, quite an empty area. Not that many settlements. Quite a wilderness. Um, but this system is appearing to develop, and the Joint Typhoon Warning Center and the Bureau of Meteorology are all saying this is going to develop into a tropical cyclone before making landfall in on the Cape York Peninsula, by the looks of things. So let's take a look at the models, the forecast, and look in a little more depth at this system uh, that is a threat to land. This is what JTWC has for it, which is a formation alert box. So they're suspecting there's going to be a formation. This doesn't give us much information, but their uh, text message does. So let's look at that. So here is the text, and this system was over Papua New Guinea as a disturbance, and their Port Moresby is in Papua New Guinea. And the key points here are that it is in a favorable environment, excellent poleward outflow, meaning that the uh, there is ventilation to the system, um, low vertical wind shear, that's good for intensification, and very warm waters. And we'll look at those waters in a minute. Um, so significant chance of intensification of the system, and it's really only going one way, which is towards the Queensland coast. The Bureau of Meteorology has a bit more information on their plot, and they have, now remember this is Australian categories, so category 2, it's approaching Cape York Peninsula, and they have it intensifying to a category 2 Australian system, that is a tropical storm in the hurricane scale. So that is a tropical storm landfall, but could it be stronger than a tropical storm? Well, let's have a look. So, as usual, we're taking a quick look at the GFS to start with, Global Forecasting System model. And this one is the one that tends to intensify these storms quite rapidly, and we'll see it does this for this storm, and making it 972 millibars at landfall on 19th of March at 18 UTC. And the, dis the low pressure moves across the Cape York Peninsula. It actually does not weak weaken very much, which is interesting, given that it's over land. And then it enters the Gulf of Carpentaria and deepens rapidly in this model. And that is a major hurricane landfall that the GFS is predicting. But let's look at the other models. And not really surprisingly, the ECMWF European Center model also has the system, but not quite as intense as the GFS. That's often the case. Uh, landfall, similar location, Cape York Peninsula probably tropical storm in this model and not as low pressure but it also enters the Gulf of Carpentaria also intensifies and also makes landfall on the Gulf of Carpentaria coast so the fact that these two models are showing it 
heading into the Gulf of Carpentaria and intensifying is intriguing, definitely one to watch. Uh, but let's stick uh, more in the near term. Um, it also has a system developing over off northwest Australia later on. And here is the Axis Bureau of Meteorology model. Let's see what that has. It looks like it does not intensify as much prior to landfall. No, oh, there it's going a little bit. Uh, Cape York Peninsula. And looks like it's stagnating a bit. Definitely not as low pressure. Not sure about the resolution of this. They have a variety of models at the Bureau, and this may not be the optimum one for looking at tropical cyclones. But it, anyway, it is there right quite north in the Gulf of Carpentaria, barely in the Gulf of Carpentaria. And it's definitely further north than the other models. But it also makes landfall. Uh, so, yeah, looks like um, they're all consistent with landfall on the Cape York Peninsula of some kind of system, probably a tropical storm, and also that the system heads into the Gulf of Carpentaria or near the Gulf of Carpentaria in the longer term. Here are the sea surface temperatures. Looks like in the region of development they are between 27 and 30 Celsius. But as you can see in the Gulf of Carpentaria it is significantly warmer uh, and in that region it looks like it, there are large areas that are over 30 degrees Celsius water. But is this different from normal? Let's have a look. Well, here are the anomalies. These are the differences from normal. And as you can see, in the region of development, it is not much different from normal. A little below normal uh, in this region, and then becoming about normal and then a bit above normal. But look at the Gulf of Carpentaria. It is warmer than normal, uh, significantly looks like it is about generally a degree one to three degrees or one to two degrees above normal in this region so certainly uh very warm in the gulf of carpentaria regarding the naming of this system if it develops i believe there's savannah so the next would be trevor so i think that this would be called tropical cyclone trevor we'll probably find out fairly soon because I believe it's intensifying and should be a tropical storm declared a tropical storm if it is not already in fact it appears that the ASCAT instrument aboard a satellite which measures the estimates of the winds at the surface based on the waves and it actually has an area brown here that is 35 to 40 knots that would make it a tropical storm already uh, there is some question as to whether it is directly associated with the center of circulation, and I think probably that's maybe why they're holding off. I'm not exactly sure, but anyway, I'm just going to say it's a tropical storm, because I can. So let's see if we can have a look at where this might make landfall. These are some of the tracks of the many models that are looking at this system, and I think that probably the most likely it would go down through the consensus track uh, which goes kind of like that uh, making landfall around this region but let's have a look at this whole area in Google Earth right so this is the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, forecast for the track landfall and that is roughly along the line of where the consensus models was going that we just looked at so it is a bit south of this jutting out bit Cape Grenville, and that is this in Google Earth. And in fact, it is actually forecast to make landfall around here. So I'm going to zoom in there. Yeah. Oh, so this is that is the spot that we were just looking at, the little jutting bit. That's the big headland off to the right. So I'm, you know, there is. A large degree of uncertainty as to where this would actually make landfall but that is the current or the precise location um, but as you can see this coastline is pretty empty it is a wild area of Australia Cape York Peninsula there are no settlements that I can see 
uh, just a few tracks. Nope, that's a river. Um, wow, yeah, it is a fascinating area. There is something here. Um, maybe a lighthouse. Anyway, there isn't a huge amount. I can't see any settlements, but there may be something hidden in there. Duh, sorry. Uh, yeah, I missed that. There is a settlement here. Small place with some houses, and that is potentially is within the range, certainly in the range of feeling some impact from this storm if it makes landfall in the current predicted location. This is not exactly where the landfall is. It's uh, actually fair a bit way to the south. But anyway, um, I'll just quickly look at Google Maps as to what that is. It's just a few houses. There is a post office. Uh, Portland House is a hotel there. So there you have it. Uh, that is a quick little look at that uh, system. Potential Tropical Cyclone Trevor, I think is the name. And that is Landfall. Possibly looks like a tropical storm on the 19th of March. And then looks likely to maintain its formation, its structure somewhat over the Cape York Peninsula bringing heavy rain to that region, passing into the Gulf of Carpentaria, and then potentially intensifying in the Gulf of Carpentaria and making landfall again for a second time somewhere on the coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. And there is some possibility that it could be quite a strong tropical cyclone when that second landfall occurs. Um, we've also got a some system developing later on in the forecast off Northwest Australia, another tropical cyclone in both the GFS shown here and the ECMWF. Savannah goes off into the South Indian Ocean and dies there in the very late in the forecast. There's another system there, but that is too far off to concern ourselves about. So uh, to finish up here is the ending sequence, which includes some of the zooms to the eye made in Google Earth, various things that I posted on Twitter. So, Please enjoy.